Hello all welcome back to my channel this is once again Dr. Sonia Musa Kutti and today I will be continuing my last video's topic that is the fractures of middle third of facial skeleton. The bones of the middle third of the facial skeleton include zygomatic bones as well. So the fractures of zygomatic complex also comes under the fractures of middle third of the face. The zygomatic complex fractures are also called as zygomatico maxillary complex fractures or the tripod fractures or the tetrapod fracture. It is called as the tetrapod fracture because the four sutural lines are disrupted, namely the zygomatico temporal, the zygomatico maxillary, frontozygomatic suture, and the zygomatico spinoid suture. So, going into the classification of zygomatic complex fractures, the zygomatic fractures are commonly divided into two the Roe and Kelly's classification and the Rose modified classification. In Roe and Kelly's classification, the fractures of zygomatic complex is divided into eight types. There is no significant displacement in the case of type 1 and type 2 include fractures of the zygomatic arch, type 3 include rotation which is around the vertical axis, type 4 denotes the rotation around the longitudinal axis, type 5 include the displacement of the complex end block, the type 6 include the displacement of the orbitoandral partition, Type 7 include the displacement of the orbital rim segments. Type 8 include the complex comminuted fractures. According to the Rose modified classification, the zygomatic complex fractures are divided into three groups Group A, Group B, and Group C. In Group A, there is stable fracture, that is, it shows minimal or no displacement and requires no intervention. In Group B, there is unstable fracture with great displacement and disruption at the frontozygomatic suture and comminuted fractures. It requires reduction as well as fixation. In group C, there is stable fracture but other types of zygomatic fractures which require reduction but no fixation. Next we can go through the signs and symptoms of zygomatic complex fracture. A simple mnemonic here is F for scalp. The F stands for the flattening of the injured cheek. The 4 E stands for the epistasis which is unilateral, ecchymosis and tenderness in the upper buccal sulcus, anaphthalmos and edema of the cheek and eyelids. The S stands for subconjunctival hemorrhage which is observed at the outer canthus. The other S stands for the step deformity of the infraorbital margin. The C stands for circumorbital ecchymosis. The A stands for anesthesia of the cheek, nose and lip. The L stands for the limitation of mandibular movement. The 2P stands for the patient may complain of dipropia and or blurring of vision and proptosis of the eye which is due to the retrobulbar hemorrhage. Before going into the treatment of mid facial fractures, it is necessary to understand the term blowout fracture or the fracture of the floor of the orbit. The true blowout fracture occurs as a result of direct trauma to the orbit with an object larger than the globe size that is a cricket ball injury. This injury causes an increase in hydraulic pressure within the orbit resulting from compression of the orbital contents. This resulting in the fracture of the orbital floor which gives away to the maxillary sinus. At the same time, the orbital fatty tissue and sometimes muscles prolapse into the sinus like a hernia. The clinical symptoms include anaphthalmos with restriction of the extraocular movements and at times diplopia may be present. The diagnosis may be confirmed by the forced duction test and by hanging drop appearance in PA view, waters position, radiograph or by CT scanning. The treatment includes surgical exploration of the orbital floor and reconstruction of the orbital floor by the bone graft whenever necessary. So, coming into the principles of treatment for the midfacial fractures. The principles of treatment consist of reduction and fixation of the fractured bones to one another and to the skull. So, first we will discuss about the methods of reduction for the midfacial fractures. The reduction methods can be of three types, the manual reduction, the reduction by traction and the open reduction. The manual reduction can be carried out in all the fresh fractures and where the fragments are not impacted. And this manual reduction can be done using various methods. These include the simple manipulation by hand, the Dingman and Harding method, the Propescue and Burlibasa method and the reduction by using special instruments. So coming into the first method of manual reduction that is the simple manipulation by the hand. 
In this method, the maxilla is held between the index finger and the thumb and brought into normal occlusion. In the case of Dingman and Harding method, the dental compound is loaded into the impression tray for mobilizing the fractured fragment of maxilla. When the impression compound is set, then the firm grip can be taken on the maxillary arch and the handle of the tray is used for rocking the maxilla. The next method of manual reduction is done by the means of long ribbon or strip gauze or rubber catheters. Whenever the maxilla is impacted and simple manual mobilization is not possible, this method can be tried. In this method, the rubber catheter's end is passed from the nostril into the oropharynx and is grasped with the help of hemostat and brought out of the oral cavity. This is repeated on the other side of the nostril and after grasping all the four ends of the catheter and stabilizing the head, the maxilla can be rocked into the normal occlusion. The last manual reduction method is a reduction by using special instruments. Here, there are special instruments like Rose Maxillary Disimpaction Forceps and Hayton Williams Forceps. So, coming into the next method of reduction, that is the reduction by traction. This method is done when an attempted manual reduction is met with failure. This can be divided into two types, the intraoral elastic traction and the extraoral elastic traction with appropriate extension bars and side bars. After reduction, there is fixation. The fixation is done when the mobility at the fractured maxilla is only slight. Following fixation, the patient is advised to avoid chewing during the first 2-3 to three weeks and should remain on a liquid or semi-solid diet. The fixations include monomaxillary fixation, intermaxillary fixation, internal skeletal wire suspension. So in the next video, I will be discussing about the open reduction methods and the treatment of fractures of the zygomatic bone. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and like this video. Thank you.